Okay, Reggie, um, before we get started today on, on you know, this week's questions, um, is there anything that you want to get into or discuss before we start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, happy Halloween to you guys out there. Uh, it's the first of the month, so Reggie's back. You know, I've been gone for about uh, 15 days, other than some flashbacks that I've been throwing up, making me look like more of a hater than I am already am. <laughs> but those were flashbacks, you know, the last week or two. But, um, yeah, so uh, we're back. Uh, we're going to try to give you all enough, another 10 good episodes and, and then see what comes on in the next few episodes. Uh, I mean, the next few up upcoming weeks, anything controversial will happen. But do y'all remember? Well, before I get into that, oh, want to, again, advertise, y'all. Y'all been slacking. Y'all ain't been buying our Death Row East t-shirts. I'm showing y'all the quality on this one. This is a Bomb First t-shirt. A nice one, the one I'm wearing today and the one I got right here. But the quality of the t-shirt and... uh. We, like I told y'all, we got the sweat tops for the Death Row East available on the uh, on the website. Y'all can hit it on YouTube. I know it's kind of a uh, leading on some of them, um, where you can't hit maybe on YouTube or mm. Facebook. Only certain ones come up. But trust me, if you go to the actual um, shop uh, website. Yeah. That um, you'll be able to get to the sweat tops, the red and black t-shirts, the black and white t-shirts, the black and gray t-shirts, and sizes all the way up to 5X. Mm -hmm. Big boys, <laughs> we wasn't making no money off of y'all. <laughs> so we had up, up 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 the price a little bit to, to $40 where the little guys are paying $30. But you know, I'm a big and tall guy, so I know I'm used to paying the, the extra money too. Get what you pay for. Oh, yeah. Got another thing I want to talk about right quick. We ain't going to spend too much time on it. But just, I've been telling y'all I was going to wait till I can get in my office to uh, to show y'all these. So this for those of y'all that don't know how an official plaque looks. Because uh, I know there's a lot of fake plaques out there. Y'all be seeing hanging up in backgrounds in people's houses and stuff. Um, just want to show y'all how a real one look. And uh, to show you that the only one gets the plats are people that, not the security guard, as y'all like to say, or, you know, the guy that has something to do with the helping park the gun. No, the state approved these. And so if they thought the Reds had something to do with that or this or this or this or that, you think they ought to prove Reds getting the plats or Reggie was just a security guard and didn't have anything involved in doing death row? But... Reg is probably one of the only ones. Suge Knight, Tupac, and Mr. Shakur, Tom Wally, that can get a plat for every album that Tupac did from 96 on. Um, but um, this one show them to y'all so y'all can see them. Ain't gonna belittle her on that. Uh, but here, here's uh, the first one is gonna be the uh, Death Row, Tupac, All Eyes on Me. Y'all see what that say? Diamond, right? It's a diamond plat. And that's how they look. This is an official one that was given to Reggie Wright by the Tupac Estate. Y'all see those? All right. And then we'll show y'all another one. The next one going to be the Machiavelli album. That one didn't quite go uh, a diamond. I think that one say four times platinum. Mm -hmm. Four million over four million records sold, and so that's how the official plat looks with the RIA sticker on there and all of that. What names on there? Reggie Wright. All right, and then this one will be the greatest hits album. That's a diamond one. Mm -hmm. Death Row Interscope. All right, that's the greatest hit album. That's a diamond one. Y'all check it out. And then this is <laughs> this is the one where y'all always get on me when I said, well, this is the reason that um, we kind of didn't continue messing with uh, the outlaws as tough as we probably should have. You know, y'all going to tell me, oh, it's two million, three million. Well, it ain't quite hit two million yet. And so that's why 
It's only uh, one time platinum, but it's still a platinum album uh, that was put out. And uh, that's the Still I Rise Tupac one. And the last one on the Tupac series we're gonna do, it would be uh, Until the End of Time. And uh, yeah, Better Days and uh, Better Days I was a part of, made that happen, but didn't do as much work. It's because we had to sign that money over. We, we needed some money. So they said, we tired of y'all, y'all niggas, man. We, we tired of y'all with all y'all complaints and y'all changes and stuff. So Reggie, this one, Better Days, you, you just sign over. We, here's $4 million in advance y'all need for that corrupt judgment. And uh, here's an advance, and y'all just let us control that album. And so that's why I said, I don't want no Better Days one. Mm. But after talking to John, and John said, man, get that. Yeah, I was a part of it. I was on death row. And so probably get the uh, Better Days one back. Uh, but yeah. Just want to show y'all the uh, the plats on Tupac. The next series, not episode coming up. The next time we tape, y'all see me a different set of clothes. Because <laughs> y'all be thinking, nigga, do this shit every day. Nigga just do this for two hours and one Saturday or Sunday afternoon when me and John get together and we just get in the, in the yard or whatever and, and do it. And so, uh, cause John and I live about two hours away from each other. And so he make that drive to come see me. Uh, but anyway, we'll be doing the series on the Death Row albums that I was involved in. And yeah, I do have one for Chronic and uh, uh, Doggy Style, even though I was just security then, but I was able to get one because guess what? I continue to help those albums sell from 96, 97 on by taking them to different distributors and stuff. So yeah, y'all like to slap Reggie and take credit away from Reggie as this security and all of that. But if you really do some research, you know Reggie did a little bit more than security. Uh, so yeah, that's the that's all I want to talk about. Uh, happy Halloween. Um, once again, I know Christians, y'all don't like to celebrate. You say that's the devil's uh, holiday and all of that. Hey, man, if it's something to bring a smile to a kid, then all be it. I forgot to mention on the last time, I talked about it a little bit. Uh, but the reason why I was wearing pink and all of that, I don't have a problem wearing pink. Real man can wear pink. But the reason why I was wearing the pink was for you young kids that don't know and it's kind of behind because I realized a lot of traditional things that, that's known out there, y'all don't really know about because us as adults don't really tell y'all, teach y'all, or put in y'all heads about. Uh, but that was for uh, Breast Cancer Awareness uh, Month, which is just about over. But hey, um, if you lost anyone uh, for breast cancer or uh, knowing someone that went through it, Y'all would appreciate that, hopefully. And hopefully you don't know anyone, but the only way you would know is if you get checked and uh, people bring awareness to it, so females. And one thing I don't tell a lot of you little youngsters, y'all don't know. Men get breast cancer as well. It's not as uh, often as it is in females, but men can uh, contract uh, breast cancer as well. So. That's all my little preaching for today. Now I'll get back to the BS. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the first thing I wanted to ask you about was, um, what was your reaction when Kanye West uh, went on these interviews, um, said the you know the stuff that he said, and then now he's um, being dropped by all his endorsement deals and his collaboration deals? Man, y'all go listen to a video that I did about Ray J and. Um, Kanye about two or three weeks ago, before all of this really started happening. He was just making the George Floyd comment and stuff like that then. I was like, man, Kanye losing control. He's, um, I don't want to categorize it as mental health because Kanye, in my mind, is a brilliant marketing genius. Brilliant. 
We can say what we want to say about him. That man is a marketing genius. That man can go right now if he can find an arena that will let him in. <laughs> but he can go right now and say, I'm doing a concert tomorrow, and it'll be sold out. No advertisement, just up and decide he want to do a concert, and people are going to go, go buy their tickets and, and, and sell it out. Uh, he can't do that right now, I don't think, because I try to tell y'all on prior uh, episodes and stuff that I did, how in the entertainment game, and I know y'all get mad, that's power to the people, black guys and all of that, but man, no Jew, Jewish men run the entertainment business. They're lawyers and all that. David Kenner and, and, and all of them were Jewish attorneys. David Kenner feared the JDL more than he feared Suge Knight, Pyrus, Crips, and all of that. Just a fact. He would mess over the, the Pat Johnsons, the Harry O's, the Shugs, and all of them before he would have messed over the Mike Kleins and the JDLs. Brian Turner's and all of them. We knew it. You got to know what you're dealing with. Kanye, unfortunately, forgot what he was dealing with, y'all. He forgot that he knew about the racist white boys, but he didn't fear them, you know, because he had to deal with them, with, you know, because y'all know he was wearing the mega hat and all of that. That's why I say that with Donald Trump. I know y'all say, Reggie, Donald Trump did more for the black folks than Obama did and all that bullshit. But, um, you know, y'all would say Donald Trump did this and Donald Trump did that. And that's why he was doing this to make America great again and all that. I don't buy it. We have a different of opinions on that. But he didn't fear them. But I keep telling you, in the entertainment world, eh, the Jewish attorneys and, and, and executives run it, run no businesses. And um, he forgot that. It's, it's, it's unfortunate because Kanye is from Chicago. And I think Kanye is putting out a message that needs to be heard. I haven't heard too many things that he's saying. It's not factual. I haven't heard, heard a word. But it's not what you say. All the time. It's how you say it. I'm going to tell y'all somebody. I think Kanye being in Chicago. Because I know he don't have too many people that. Everybody are yes man. When you get to the level that he is. Everybody yes, yes, yes. And so. He's been humble. Trust me. Trust me. When you start losing. And uh, and things start getting cut. You get humble. Federal government humbled my ass. Believe it or not. They will humble you. And by humbling, you start taking money away from people. That'll get you humble. But you're still a man. You still put your your, your pants on and all that. So you're still going to say what you got to say. Uh, but you might say it a little different. He needs, being in Chicago, I hope my boy, the man, I'm not, I think he's one of the smartest men to lie. But I'm not a a follow of his religion. Um, but if you're following any God, I mean, the one God and you ultimately go, I don't care if you're Catholic, Christian, Muslim or whatever, as long as you know uh, Emmanuel is, 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 is God, you know, whether you believe in Jesus as the Lord and all of that, that's on you and your faith and whatever your parents or whatever you, you go into. But Louis Farrakhan, y'all, I don't be the first one to say it. Kanye need to go sit down and meet with Louis Farrakhan and find out how to present this. I'm not saying go and get up under him and be a, 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 a FOI or or join the nation or anything. I'm not promoting that. That's that's on you. But that man is wise. That man is smart. And Kanye forgot that he's still a nigga, y'all. And until that resonates to him, that no matter how much money he has, 
that you're still a nigga until he understand and how to speak appropriate into this white man's world, as, as Tupac said. It's kind of all I want to say about Kanye. Uh, because I'm not going to... It's easy to shit on a brother when they down and, and when they not hidden. I wish I was close with Kanye. I wish I had a relationship where I could reach out to Kanye like a whack 100 uh, claims to. And like I had, I, mean, I have, I can get the shit night whenever I want to and get word to him because if I was him, I would be my own distribution now because his name is big enough. He, he can just put out, go and do a, a, a Amazon, AKA, not Amazon, but I'll call it, call it Yee. And I, I, I keep calling him Kanye and he said that's disrespectful to call him Kanye because he changed his name to Yee, so I apologize to him. I know he'll never hear this video, but <laughs> I would like to say Yee, hey bro, you big enough yourself. Go make your own distribution, distribute your own music. Go and make and distribute all that, get all you want, do a Tina Turner on them. Say all I want is my name and take myself and go rebuild under Yee. That would be the advice I would give Kanye to answer your question. Yeah. Do you find it weird that, um, you know, they dropped him when he started making the, the comments about Jewish people and stuff like that, but a couple, of, maybe it was a year, maybe a little more, it, he got into some controversy when he said that slavery was a choice, yeah. but he didn't get dropped from any of his sponsors when he said that. Didn't offend. He didn't offend them. He offended us. And unfortunately... And we're going to take it back. Because I, 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 three weeks ago, prior to all this, said, y'all can have Kanye. Don't y'all remember that video? Say y'all can have Kanye. We're done with Kanye. We did the same thing to OJ. But when OJ got in trouble, what did he do? We started saying that black mama and all that. Kanye can come back. <laughs> <laughs> He can come back. He gonna have to come back. But he gonna have to be advised well. You know? Mm -hmm. He apologizing to, to them. And he apologized. And I think somebody's in his ear. Because he did apologize to George yeah. Floyd family recently. And, and all of that. So somebody's in his ears, apparently. Yeah. But he can come back. That's one thing about us as, 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 a, as a black race. And as Americans. We're forgiving for society. If Kanye Holly get us back, you know what he needs to go do now? Hmm. Go get with his boy Donald Trump, who probably still loves him. And him and Donald Trump need to get it on plane to go to Russia hmm. and get BG out. Go get Br Britney out. We'll take you back. How y'all think Jesse Jackson got? Yeah, I'm going a little bit too deep and we're going off the subject. Well, how y'all think Jesse Jackson got known other than walking and taking pictures with Mike with, with Dr. King? Y'all gonna no, Jesse was bigger than that. He had this. Y'all can't even tell me the name of the organization he was pushing back in 1980. He got big when he went over there and got and got those uh black people free when they were holding them hostage. And, and, and he convinced them that. America don't give a fuck about blacks no way. <laughs> Let them go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they ain't gonna come over here and, or not come over here because they got the black hostages. But, but Justin went over there and got the hostage, hostages free. Kanye, go get Britney. Get your boy Donald Trump. He, they got pictures of him sucking on something or doing something because Putin got something on his ass. But get your boy Trump. Call him, see if he'll take your call. Get on a plane, go to Russia, and get him out. Um, so Gene Deal did an interview, and he um, tripled down on his theory about the Amir Muhammad. Um, he said some some somewhat crazy stuff about like the Biggie stickers being on the rims of the vehicle he was in, which marked the card, so people knew what car he was in. Um, I know you don't like talking about Gene Deal, but he did mention y your name. 
So I just wanted to see if you had any reaction to that, if you saw it. Yeah. Well, first of all, shout out to Gene and Art. They over there doing great things. Guess they done partnered up. Cause I know the Gene ain't dropping nothing on this channel no more. He just been a weekly or every two weeks guest over there on Art. But I don't blame you. Cause the nigga getting numbers over there for Art. So I get it. Uh, and we do it over here at Bomb First. So <laughs> how can we mm -hmm. <laughs> say anything? But, um, Gene promoting the book. Let's call it what it is. Didn't know he's not doing a great job at promoting that book. He did a great job of promoting the book, letting us know that a book was coming. I didn't know the fucking book was out <laughs> until he put it up. Mm. And I'm so I'm, I'm, I'm surprised because enough people want to hear from Gene to where he could have got on their platforms and promoted his book. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Y'all go pick up Gene's book. I don't know the name of it, but uh, put in Gene Deal book and I'm sure it'll pop up. Go and support the brother. I'm not a hater. If I disagree with you, see, it's a difference between the relationship or, or my feelings towards Gene Deal versus Keefy D. Keefy D, I, I think he's a piece of shit. Don't give a fuck about him. Gene Deal, I just disagree with. Other than that, I don't have no problems with Gene. Actually, when I was communicating, I thought he was a cool dude. Mm -hmm. So I can't take that away from him. Just disagree. Um, disagree with him on this subject, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, the only things I want to keep pointing out is he keep always throwing back to say, we saw, we saw, but no, y'all didn't see the actual shooter. He keeps wanting y'all to believe that they saw the shooter. They saw a guy allegedly, that they were having problems with Muslims. People don't know that they were meeting with the Muslims in New York over some issues prior to all of this going down. And so Muslims been in their head the whole time mm -hmm. in the bad boy camp because they had some issues. So one minute he's saying the guy that did it is somebody that got checked real tough by, by Puffy. Mm -hmm. We know Amir Muhammad wasn't walking around dressed up like no Muslim at the Soul Train Awards. Mm -hmm. so, so he let you believe that, but then he gets away from that, that particular person. But he always throw that incident up. But then he goes and say, Little C saw a peanut head guy with a bow tie and a blue suit. We got audio that we played. Little C said, I ain't seen shit. Mm -hmm. I know this for a fact. Little C was so motherfucking drunk that night, they were helping him out of the hospital. He couldn't walk out of the hospital on his own. If Little C's or Gene Deal tell me I'm a liar on that, they's a motherfucking liar. I'm not saying that they're a liar, I just said if they say that I'm lying about that. Little C's was so drunk so he don't know what he saw. If he said, but he told y'all in the interview, I ain't seen shit. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that they saw a guy and put his head in the car and was hanging around. That was Shaheed Muhammad. Because that nigga's a G like that. He's no longer with us. Rest in peace, Shaheed. But Shaheed is a G like that. He runs LA streets like that when it comes to the Muslims and, and street dudes respecting. They're not fear of the Bloods and Crips are not fear of the Muslims. Muslims not fear of Bloods and Crips. Mm -hmm. They like a third game. Some of y'all say a fourth game. It would be police, Muslims, Pyrus, and Crips. <laughs> when you talk about blacks, because I'm not slating the Mexicans, because they're a gang of their own. Uh, but yeah, so so I believe Shahi did that, or or, or someone to resemble. But does that make him the guy that's sitting down the street in a car? So I don't know what Gene's theory is now, if it was a sitting at the corner, car on the corner waiting, or if it was a drive-by while they was at the, I don't know what his position is on that, so I'm not gonna quote it. I believe he, his position is they were sitting at the car when they drove by, they were pointing it out. But my point is, how can that guy be there 
And then five minutes later, in a car down the street at a light. Mm-hmm. So the only problem I have with Gene is they keep identifying Amir Muhammad because of this cr- crazy ass motherfucker that jumped up doing a de- deposition and ran across the freeway that brought M- Amir Muhammad name up in there. We got about three or four different Amir Muhammad's that was around that, that crew. Amir Muhammad, David Max friend. They ran track with him. That's a fucking mortgage broker and all of that. That they want to try to put out talking about he was committed in a murder or something like that. And Chino. Investigate that. We did an episode with Greg Cadians about that. That was some bullshit. That was some husband and wife boyfriend shit. But this dude is a real estate guy trying to live. I, man, I, just, I wish this dude, he's worse than me just letting these people say this stuff about him. And not starting to sue people. But. Also, Stutterbach's name was Amir Muhammad. That was his Muslim name. Mm -hmm. Or he had an ID under there. But this fool throw out that name and he didn't even say Amir, he said Ashmir. He said about five different names before he came up with that name. But y'all have to know this dude to understand this dude. He was this... Fishing, throwing out stuff. The the dude goes to Amir Muhammad's house. He didn't know who he was. <coughs> he called the fucking police on him. Hey, it's this crazy guy in my house talking about he knows who I am and doing all this. Come and get. They didn't do nothing because you know the FBI told him. Oh no, he's our informant. We trying. He goes down to the station and complain. What happened to this guy? What happened? Mm-hmm. This guy showed up to my house doing all of this, saying all of this. What happened? Man, this they are falsely identifying Amir Muhammad just because of who he knows. One thing that y'all find about from people in L.A. And, and they didn't even know each other from L.A. I guess they were cool because they were from L.A. But they met at Oregon at a college. Anybody ever went to college know you kind of get cool until you don't like them anymore. People that's from your your community or your hometown. That's how you connect. Oh, you from L.A.? Oh, what's up, L.A.? Oh, you from New York? Hey, what's up, New York? And then you either like them or you don't, you know. But you give them that shot because y'all from the same area. Mm-hmm. But Gene, he's trying to sell a book. He's... I just tell y'all to go back and look at the Broomfield thing. Y'all just don't know. Gene has identified three different people. Little C's say, we don't know. I, we, I didn't see nothing. That's what, we got the audio. We done played it on ball first about five times what Little C said in that interview. I'm telling y'all. And I... Anybody that was at that hospital can tell y'all. Lil C's was drunk. Y'all know how Lil C's was. Y'all seen him dancing and shit in front of girls when he get that liquor in him? <coughs> y'all know how people get when they get drunk? And then hearing that their best friend, their mon- no, no, not best friend, the nigga that they looked up to, their role model, had just died while they were there, you devastated. Gene is misidentifying. I'm not saying he's lying. I'm not saying that. I just think they misidentifying somebody just on feelings or speculation. And that don't work in the court of law. Just because I feel this happened. Or I think this would happen. Just think about what all y'all used to feel until Keefe D came out and told y'all the truth about Reggie Wright and Shug. Couldn't tell most of y'all Reggie Wright and Shug. And Sharita didn't have nothing to do with the murder of Tupac. Five to ten percent of you stupid motherfuckers still believe that shit, even though Keefe D tell y'all this is what happened. Keefe D lied. He was trying to get out of a case. Keefe D ain't gonna lie to try to get out of a case in Vegas. He told them, yeah, we did Biggie. But that's too deep for most of y'all. Because that's the case that Greg Katie's want to solve. 
He didn't want no Vegas case out. He wanted that big and small case out. Good year. What do you think about him saying the thing about the stickers on the rims? That that was like to... to um, That's something new. Yeah. This the first time he started speaking on that. Yeah. That's just something he done heard from Phil Carson, from the dossier, and, and Russell Poole and all of that. But it was marketing and advertisement on a rental car. Mm -hmm. They were marketing. But then, I guess Poochie or Amir or whoever y'all want to believe has something to do with it. Some stupid motherfucker. <clears throat> because in the next breath, it was on Big's car, right? Mm -hmm. I thought Puffy was the intending target. So the, the stickers is on Biggie car, but we want to get Puffy. But you shoot at the car with the stickers on it? Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. I don't even think the person that's interviewing him believe that theory that he's mm. he's pushing. Don't believe it. Yeah. Okay. Um, DOC is doing interviews lately. Um, I wanted to know if you had any stories <laughs> with DOC or any interactions with him. <laughs> Doc. Doc was around before I came around. I had interactions with him. Uh, show you how much of a bitch Doc is. The Doc is, well, he's from Texas. I don't know him as Doc. I know him as Donald Duck. Cause that's what we always call him because the way his voice sounds now <laughs> after this car accident, that's what she always referred to him as Donald Duck. But this is how scary DOC is. And he's talented as a writer. Talented. This is a nigga that signed the Ruthless for a gold chain necklace, a medallion. That's what his signing bonus and his signing to Ruthless Records was. Still a talent. No matter. Like, like what I like what he says about it is DOC says he had to go through something to get to the point where he's at. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully Dre is taking care of him like that now. Don't know. I heard you have a daughter that is better than Erica Badu as far as singing. Mm. And uh, when she got the body that Erica Badu, she's a bad little girl. But Doc, and if Doc's writing for her, she's going to be even bad because Doc can't write. Doc mm. got the pen. Or he knows the people around him to get it. Uh, because that's why we signed a lot of people that we had from L Dog and all of them, that all the people that wrote most of the Chronic 2001 for Doc. But I'll tell you the story I had with Doc, so... <laughs> That nigga had me fly all the way to Dallas, right? Because I was trying to get him to sign off. Because they had him, Dick Griffey, had got a, a judgment against Death Row for like $4 million or something like that. Mm -hmm. Saying that, you know, they were part owners of, of Death Row. I tell y'all, everybody claim ownership with Death Row. Uh, you got a guy that don't really claim it, but we know they had some ownership or was an investor. Then we have Harry O, of course. Then we got Dick Griffey. We got Dre, Shook, and Doc. And so they got a judgment because Shug and didn't do what he's supposed to do in court or whatever. But it was only for $4 million when the company was worth like hundreds of millions still. Mm -hmm. And so, but Sugar was in prison. So I called Doc and said, Jock, you know, y'all got this lien on, on the building. And I'm trying to buy the building from, from Sugar and Death Row. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh, I want this lien to be released off the, the building. Mm -hmm. Fly in of Dallas, and you know, uh, and I'll meet you at the gate. You know, reason why he's doing that, cause he, you know, figuring I can't bring no gun, and mm -hmm. like somebody gonna do something to him. I'm trying to handle business, right? So I fly in with a check for I think we was gonna do it for like two hundred fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. So I have a check for him for cashier check for two hundred fifty thousand dollars for him. 
Well, I'm just flying in, telling him, Doc, I got to be back on the plane in like an hour and a half, two hours. Mm -hmm. Flying right back there to L.A. So I come up there and meet with Doc behind the gate. And the whole time this nigga got a tape recorder on him. Mm -hmm. right? Trying to get me to threaten him. Like, Doc, we just trying to do business. You sign this paperwork, take the lien off, give you this, this cashier check. Ow. His, his, his attorney was Joseph Porter. Mm -hmm. That's the guy that ended up suing me on the body case, which me and Joseph are still cool, though. And so Joseph, and so Doc goes, ah, I had to change my mind. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this now. Like, Doc, why you have me fly all the way out here? The hell of this, and now you changing your mind. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing I already done talked to his attorney. Attorney said, that nigga don't sign. That nigga was going to do what? He going to sign without me being involved? He going to sign? He said, let me know if that nigga don't sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get off the plane and say, hey, Joseph. Joseph Porter. Doc won't sign. You know, I need to, I'm trying to close that row on the building. Mm -hmm. Trying to get, you know, me and she got a deal going down. I'm buying the building from him. I got... Well, you got my half, my 125? Yeah, I'll get a cashier check made out to you for 125. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I'll sign on his behalf. <laughs> I took that motherfucking paperwork over to Joseph Porter, his attorney signed off, and got the, got the uh, lien release for mm -hmm. 125. And so that was the only dealing that I ever had with Doc. That happened in like 98 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Never heard anything from Doc about it. Yeah. I don't know what happened between him and Joseph Porter. And so, but then by then, he probably was over there working back with Dre and doing all right. Mm. We had to be in L.A. And so, he was probably like, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, Doc was cool. That Suge, Doc was who Suge wanted. It wasn't Dre. Mm -hmm. Doc was going to be the one that Suge was bodyguarding and was taking and was making things happen for him. Doc is the one that introduced and got Dre and Michelin and now comfortable with uh, with, with Shug. Mm -hmm. So to be honest, if it wasn't for no Doc, it wouldn't have been no Death Row. Yeah. It wouldn't have been no Shug Knight. It wouldn't have been no Snoop Dogg. So Doc is the one that really uh, made that connection happen. I'm not saying they wouldn't have been famous or artists right. or successful somewhere else because I do believe Dre would have hit home run somewhere else. Uh, I do believe, uh, you know, well, uh, as we know, Doc M never really did a major album after that. Mm -hmm. But um, we wouldn't have known Death Row as we know it today if it wasn't for the DOC. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, who that's was, what I know about Doc. Who were some of the artists that you signed that you were saying that helped kind of ghostwrite? That Texas the, keep uh, connected like El Dorado and El Dog he did most of the writing okay. Doc took the writing from them so I was going I had Bart uh, gave El Dog a publishing deal and the right deal was going to go out there and Jimmy and all of them mm -hmm. and, and uh, but Jimmy heard about it and Jimmy just wrote a check oh, okay. <laughs> and Jimmy always took care of, he took care of Sugar and Dre yeah. but Sugar Knight and, and Dr. Dre to ever say something bad about Jimmy Iving They'd be disingenuous. Uh, and the, the war that, reason why Jimmy don't look out for Suge to this day is behind some bullshit that me and Suge did. Mm. When you bring family involved and showing up at people's houses unannounced and sending niggas like Magic and them to your, to your house and filming people and your wife sitting in a, you know, giving addresses mm -hmm. to their house, I get it. I didn't get it then. I thought it was funny. I thought it was the way it been, but I get it now. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. Do you think the address thing in, in the DVD, that was the last straw? That We, we got past that hurdle. Okay. I was this, uh, when U.S. News, uh, it was this reporter named Allison. She was a right, big writer for U.S. Newsweek. Okay. She the one that she was going to front cover U.S. Newsweek and all of that, the Straight Outta Compton article and all of that. Allison Schwartz, one short, she was a black chick. Mm. 
I brought took her up to the prison. And she was doing, and this is when Dan Quayle and Bob Doyle and all of them was going after. And Shug said some stuff in the prison in that interview, in that article talking about them. Mm-hmm. Bob but, Doyle. Okay. Jimmy Iovine calling them gay and saying him and Dre was fucking and all of that shit. Mm. And Jimmy called me. He goes, Reggie. All I do for you, he said, I do all of this shit. I didn't do this because I had to do it for Death Row. I do this because I want to make you look good as an executive mm -hmm. and make stuff happen for you. You couldn't call me and give me heads up that an article like this was going to come out? Oh. What you talking about, Jimmy? So you know that article from the lady from News, U.S. Newsweek? He said, Reggie, I'm so disappointed in you. I said, wait a minute, homie. Hold, hold on. I don't work for you, homie. I work for Suge Knight. Suge Knight, my homeboy. I'm loyal to Suge. Bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's Reggie. Y'all mm -hmm. don't know Reggie, so that's why y'all talk all that bullshit about Reggie. But Reggie loyal to who he fuck with. Mm -hmm. I said, but I, I work for sure. I'm, I, don't, I don't, I don't know who the other motherfuckers, you know, David Kenner and all of them right. sitting in this chair doing. But I don't, I don't get down like that. That's what Shug got to say. That's what Shug gonna say. I'll talk to him off the side and say, Shug, you're making a bad decision. <laughs> Do this, or man. Let's rethink this. Mm -hmm. But I ain't gonna come and say it in front of you. I'll never do that in life to to who I'm loyal with. Yeah. I'll do it to him now. Yeah. <laughs> now I play that card different because I know how it turned out. But back then, she wasn't doing me like that, and she wasn't that nigga towards Reggie. Mm -hmm. He was that nigga. Always been that nigga. But not towards Reggie. Or I haven't been. Sharita always told me he gonna get you too, Reggie. Mm -hmm. He gonna get you, but. I used to always say, shit, he ain't going to do that to me. I had too much. Yeah. I knew I had the publishing. Yeah. I knew I had the building. So I wish he would do it to me. Mm -hmm. But he eventually did it in his own way. Uh, but, um, yeah. But that's the kind. And ever since then, I don't tell you, it was at a point. Shook probably, when he met, got out of prison, he probably seen Jimmy or met with Jimmy three times after that. Three, four times after that. He would still look out. We're mm -hmm. still getting stuff done. But he'd be like, oh, y'all deal with David Kenner. When he used to be. Reg, uh, I got uh, nine inch nails or this person in my office or the Rough Riders, you know, they were hot then. Or, but I'll get you in at four. Mm -hmm. And start being like, oh, Dean, tell Reggie uh, to go see David. David will take care of it. Mm. <laughs> and so... It got to that point, even though, you know, I would still do stuff like when they went to Hawaii, even after Shug got home, when I, when Shug went to get to Hawaii, uh, I was trying to get him a, the suite, the big suite at the Four Seasons, and shit. They wasn't trying to give it up to us. Mm -hmm. Where I was just had called Jimmy, Jimmy, come on, man, tell him. And Jimmy was like, all right, Reggie, how much you need? It's $10,000 a night. <laughs> God damn, Reggie. Put it on your credit card. God damn. And he'll do stuff like that, you know. Mm. And it's be like, all right, all right, Reggie, I'll do it for you. But, yeah, that's all that relationship was. Okay. Um, did you hear that, uh, this again goes a little bit back to Gene Deal, but I just wanted to see if you had heard the same thing that he said, which was that Puffy cooperated with the federal government when Suge Knight, Irv Gotti, and Jay Prince were going to try to form a distribution company. Did you ever hear anything about that or know like why that distribution company never um, came to fruition with anything? Yeah. And just like I always say about Gene and, and, and other people, I'd be like, how do you know you wasn't there? So how would I know what Puffy did or didn't do? I, I yeah. can't say. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just said whatever as far as cooperation, it ain't like he got on no stand. He ain't like he... Gave him, I don't know what information he could have gave him, other than that they were trying to form a company. Mm -hmm. But they all got in trouble on their own, to be honest. Suge got in trouble with the, uh, eventually for trying to take, um, well, for assault, you know, when Pooh Ryder, when he stood up, that's the one time I can say Suge stood up. 
proved right there when when she got that violation in 2004 uh when the valet got socked yeah. in the back of the head, that wasn't sure. Pooh Ryder did that shit. And Wack was there. Mm -hmm. Shook didn't do that. I ain't got word to it. Told my attorney that I had representing Robin Yanes. Hey, Robin, tell Shook, man, I'll get word that Pooh Ryder's the one that did that shit. You know, Shook sent word back to me. He was like, don't do that shit. Don't do that. I'll, I'll I'll ride for this. I'll take this violation. All right. Now nah, don't even don't ever bring that up to me, again, Robert. Is what he told his attorney. Mm. And so um. Yeah. So she looks, she looks a strong on that. Um. Well, what was the question? <laughs> I forgot the question. Um, about the distribution company with with Shug. Yeah. Irv so and... that's what she got in trouble for that. Yeah. And then she on stupidity shit. Uh, Irv got he's fucking with uh, Supreme mm -hmm. he beat it he got it but they went after him Jay Prince one of his business partners got caught with drugs it's just coincidence for ghetto niggas doing ghetto shit that it all happened whether they were going to do it or get it going off white folks didn't worry about that this is what people don't know about the game those distributors wasn't number one. They were all still had some type of deal somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, Little Jay still had a deal with Virgin. <clears throat> Puffy wasn't fucking with him, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sure he still had a deal with uh, with Clyde Davis and them. What was that? Uh, was it Arista? Arista. BMG, BMG. I mm -hmm. think it's the parent company. Um, and then Irv had what? Def Jam? Uh, Def Jam, which we heard from the documentary. They were going in and out. He probably thought he could have got out. But probably Shug and Irv were probably the only one because Shug could have got away from Koch, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. You know. But this is what people don't know about retail game. And, Sh and Shug was talking this back in 95, 96 as well. And that's why he was creating the, the Hammer Time, the Machiavelli, and the Doggy, the doggy Style record. Mm-hmm. And so he been, had been talking about that. That's something that's been on his mind. But all the research that, that he had me do and all of that, from the Violet Browns and all of that, they told me, Reggie, can't do this. We have a hard time. And she worked for, uh, I think Violet was at Warehouse, Warehouse Music, oh, over the, the, the head buyer for uh, Warehouse. Mm -hmm. She was like, we have a hard time getting you know the companies to pay you know to pay for for the the, the, the songs that interscope are or the only way we get paid or we eventually get paid is they'll hold up like the next hot project coming out say well y'all ain't gonna get this it's only gonna be the ones that pay circuit city or target or sam goody or you know no company's gonna be the only ones gonna have these mm -hmm. Or Best Buys, because y'all have y'all delinquent, so y'all ain't gonna get that Eminem album that's that's down the pipeline. And so the the, the say that to say is that y'all be bankrupt within a year if y'all did that because we didn't have streaming and all of that stuff where it's easier now just to go through one place because you'll never get your money. You'll always be in the hole because they only pay you when it's something that they want to get another order or shipment on mm -hmm. is when they eventually cut the check of what they owe. Y'all learn about free goods and stuff like that in this business? Where y'all think just because some say a platinum, you really only got paid on 75% of that. Because retailers get what they call free goods. <clears throat> That's how they're able to give sales and run your shit. <coughs> in the newspaper or you know in their their ad advertisements when they come out well i'm getting too deep i'm getting too deep and i'm talking the game back in the 2000s uh versus now in the streaming stuff which is a whole to totally different game but i was just talking about what would happen there so i don't think they were worried like that okay. like people think yeah uh that they were worried and and the feds or the government get credit for because the big, it was six majors back then. 
I think it's only four now because they kind of merged. But it was six. This, and Shig always wanted to call seven. He wanted to call it Lucky Seven. Mm. That's the distribution company he was saying. I said, why, why Lucky Seven, Shug? Because a the motherfucker's lucky they got a deal. Mm. <laughs> and so that's, and they were the seven, would be the seven distributor. Gotcha. And so that's why he came up with the name was going to be Lucky Seven. Okay. But yeah. Okay. So I, I they wouldn't worry like that. Uh, so, but what, what Gene knows or what he's talking about, who knows? Who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Did you see um, with Kanye getting bumped from the millionaire list, Puffy was added, and it kind of um, it showed like the top five billionaires that had something to do with hip hop, and it had you know Dre, Puffy, um, Jay Z, and then it had somebody I'd never heard of. Um, yeah, don't say it. Okay. I want y'all to see if y'all know who it is in the comment section. Well, not in the comment section because we're gonna say it before the end, but. It's this guy from the Bay. And it's funny how they put, well, I guess he was a rapper, but they put a guy like that on a list of entrepreneurs or entertainments. And then they put a guy on the list. The number one is, he appeared to be a white boy. But I think after reading his name and all of that, I really think he's a mid-eastern mid guy. And so that's why they could maybe consider him on a list with a bunch of black guys. Mm. But so did we say the five names? We said four. Did you say four? Um, so it was Dre? It was Dre, Jay-Z, huh? Puffy. Um, I'm trying to think who else is on that list. Kanye. Well, he got dropped, and no, that's what allowed no, Puffy he's, to... No, he's one of the four. Oh, okay. And then the fifth guy would be... And so John will post this up. So y'all see it? Okay. His name is Burner. Mm -hmm. And he's from the, from the Bay Area from Oakland or Frisco area. But guess what he's the king of, really? Even though he calls himself being a rapper, y'all can't tell me one song he did without going to Google. I know all of y'all now on Google and posting it in the comment section, which is all good. Do you know it all, fan, the John, the name of the I have song? no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. Me either. But his name is Burner, and uh, he makes, he made $410 million. $410 million. Only two of them were still left in, and that's why this list was done. The show that only Puff and uh, and uh, Jay Z, Jay Z, are the only billionaires left. Uh, now that Yee them fell off, and that, and I think it was also the this the show that Dre never was one, mm -hmm. which I know he made seven hundred million dollars, but if you take seven, you take. 300 million away for taxes, <laughs> I guess that will take you down to about 400 million. Plus, he had to give 100 to his wife. So maybe that's what pulled him down uh, or to his ex wife. But this dude made money off of the marijuana game, y'all. He's been doing legal marijuana, and he's the guy that made all your cookies. You get credit for all the your, your different type of cookies in the marijuana game that they will put on a hip hop game as a billionaire. But to to say that a brother made that type of money off the weed game, uh, shout out. Just wanted to throw that name out and that person's name out just to give y'all some information on somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask, how present was Tupac's mom during his time at death row? Like, how often oh. was she around or what, did, she li did, she, did she live in Atlanta and come out to California or did yeah. she get a house out, you know? How well, was she? you know, the, the the story goes that, you know, before even she, Tupac sold one album for Death Row. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, before even, even Pac getting out, I'm pretty sure the deal was signed. Mm -hmm. But even before she, uh, she got out or right during that time, she'll get purchased a house for her in Atlanta. For his mother. John Pete on the show? No, it's all wet. <laughs> You're not realizing it? Yeah, I'm sitting in a puddle. <laughs> yeah. She's wet as fuck. <laughs> Sorry about that. Probably yeah. have to flip it. Okay. It's all right. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> probably leaking. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, Chewy. It better not be Chewy. <laughs> you can smell it. Man. I don't want to smell it. <laughs> no, I think it's leaking from <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, how present was Tupac's mom during his time? 
um, on the label? I know it was only 11 months or whatever, but how present was, was she as far as being around? Um, Ms. Shakur, to be honest, I can think of about five events that mm-hmm. I saw her at. Okay. Uh, you got to remember, uh, she had just got a new home mm-hmm. in Atlanta, so she was happy about that, that death row and, uh, had purchased mm-hmm. for her to get in. Or, or her son. We'll say that because I'm sure it eventually got billed back to him. Yeah. That's how the game goes. So that Tupac, I'll say that, had purchased for uh, for her um, in Atlanta. Well, actually, not Atlanta. Um, Stone Mountain, right? Yeah. Stone like Mountain, that. Georgia. Yeah. Out that way. In Georgia. <laughs> I'll just say that. I know you Google motherfuckers will tear me up. Uh, and so, the events that I saw Mr. Shakur at was the Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. I took her shopping. I took her and Sugar Mother shopping and to lunch one time. That's the time I told y'all the story where she had me give each one of them $5,000 uh, cash and uh, drive him to to the mall he got mad at me but i didn't like the beverly center i took him over to the uh, west side pavilion mm. uh, yeah. but they weren't trying to spend that money mm. and i think that just being women they just didn't want to shop in front of each other and mm-hmm. want to get their own stuff he wanted them to go and buy something nice you know five thousand dollars back then was yeah was a decent piece of change yeah now you can go and spend that on an outfit. But back then, you can buy you a few outfits. He just wanted them to go buy, you know, show them a good time. Take them to dinner, Reg. You know. But I remember coming back to them there. But yeah, it's because you took them to that whack-ass ball. <laughs> you didn't take them to the uh, Beverly Center like I told you. And so I was like, whatever. We went and ate over there. And that's where they want to go eat. And so uh, he said, well, now she, she, my mama going to go in and spend... Spent all that money on uh, on her sis- on my sisters and the grandkids, because that's all she worried about. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to do something nice for her. Shit, man, no grown women. <laughs> and then Pop was like, yeah, sure, you know, be giving my mom that type of money. I don't give her that type of money. I'm not saying or throwing nothing out. He just said, I don't give my mom that type of money at right. one time. Yep. Why I'm not saying. Don't know. Not sure why, because he didn't elaborate on it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so that time, of course, did I say the Mother's Day event? Yeah. Okay. She wasn't at the Christmas event. I know uh, they were hanging out in Calabasas towards the end. Okay. Once he got his new house, because he was only there for like a month and a half, two months, oh. if that. Okay. Once it got furnished and everything. Yeah. But I know the, the auntie was out there. That's why I always throw the slight. Everybody disagree with me. But I know for a fact that Yasmin wasn't around as far as working in the capacity that she was towards that week or two before Park died or got killed. She did come back. Mm -hmm. You know, she was there at the hospital and stuff like that. Yeah. But Molly was pretty much in that position. Or maybe she was just at the office trying to get the euthanasia stuff going. Mm. Don't know. Uh, but the mother probably was in town during that time, but she didn't come around death row. You know, you don't yeah, bring yeah. your mothers in. Of course. You only bring them around to events. You don't bring your mom to your workplace. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, and I wasn't one to be at Park House. I was mainly a sugar guy, mm-hmm. you know. I know I sent my bodyguard, this guy named Cooper Hagen, they went out for Thanksgiving to Atlanta. Okay. And I remember they went out, out there and spent that Thanksgiving when he first got out of prison. Mm-hmm. So that would have been uh, 95. Yeah. Thanksgiving, November 95. He went to, to Atlanta uh, then. Those about the only times I can say Pac saw his mother in person other than the last two months once he got his house in Calabasas. Don't know what was going on there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, those are the, the events. And 
the timetable that I believe she was in town yeah. from Atlanta. Okay. And when Pop saw his mother doing the, the final days. Okay. Um, a lot of the people um, of the younger generation weren't really alive when Tupac was alive, when he did music. They, you know, were born afterwards. For people that only see the hit em up stuff or, you know, the him dissing this person or that person, how would you say Tupac was as a person? Like, oh. would you say he was a good, you know what I mean? Like, from your interactions with him, how would you describe how, how he was on a day to day? My interaction was always professional. Mm. Cause, you know, Reggie was like the, the security professional guy, the no nonsense uh, guy. You know, I wasn't one hanging out with them, fucking on girls and all of that. I'm yeah. the one that's kind of getting guys around and making shit, making sure the limo's there, mm -hmm. the girls that they requested got there with the car service, making sure shit it was happening. You know, Reg, get this, Reg, get, do that. That was my that was my thing. Mm -hmm. Reg, where's your guys at? Where's your security guy? Pop about to move. Pop about, make sure they okay. Make sure those niggas wasn't getting caught off into no shit. Mm -hmm. There's been, been plenty of times where I done had to step in and take over. Mm -hmm. When bitches laying out, passed out. All right, we got to get this bitch out of here mm -hmm. and get her in the car. Because she don't know. I mean, because, you know, Sugar was on house arrest during that time. So the hotel or the motel was was his office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and him and Parker had a ball in that red room. Mm -hmm. They, you can see all the pictures and all of that. That's where all those pictures, that, those niggas was playing. Mm -hmm. That's where their, that's where their hotel room, that was their house. That was Shug house, that really was Shug house for, for like two or three months when he was on house arrest. Yeah. And so, cause his room was in there, I had a bulletproof uh, glass uh, window put in and that's where he used to sleep at, <laughs> in his little back room. And then his office. And with couches and, you know, that was his living quarters. Mm -hmm. And so that's where they played. And that's why Stu Pac was either on a movie set or at the studio. Mm -hmm. and that's where they hung until he went to go home and lay down. Yeah. You know, the food was brought to the studio. Everything was brought to him. The weed was brought to the studio. The, the bitches was brought to the studio. Mm -hmm. That was their playground. And and the safest spot, and they were working, you know that the studio atmosphere. That they lived in, 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 and killed that. So th my profession was always with Pac was like, all right, who going on the trip, you know, so I can get the office to get your tickets or this or that, or mm -hmm. we going here, we got to be there at that time. And Papa G did his too, you know, for the PR stuff. Papa G would, you know, uh, control. Uh, we gotta do this, or mm -hmm. we, I need you at this movie set. Saturday Night I mean, Live, and then we're gonna yeah. go here, and yeah, yeah. You know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what's our relationship. I mean, you know, what people wanna always try to put out, like, I'm trying to put out, like, I was with Pac and right No! Yeah, you've never really said. That's Frank, yeah. Kevin, and all of them that's rolling with him. I wrote, Shook Security was this guy named Bill Upton, and, um, who, was, who else I had on Shug? I had some, oh, Cooper. Cooper Hagen was the one that I had on Shug. Reggie just owned a security company mm -hmm. and, and, and was always around, you know, making stuff happen. But, you know, that's, that's, that's how our relationships were. But as far as seeing, yeah. from being around and knowing, it's very smart, always writing. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a jokester, you know, a laugh and smile. He was very charismatic. Uh, always had a joke or something going on, or you know, the the loud one in the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's his man, Pop. Uh, serious about working in that studio, uh, but they pretty much before they came to the studio already had what they were gonna do planned out. Mm -hmm. Either it was on the, like I said, the trailer. Although 11 months they were shooting video, I gotta remember how many videos that man shot in that 11 month period. And movies. And two movies. Mm -hmm. Working on the hosted MTV uh, uh, rap videos or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, was at Venice Beach doing stuff. Doing a PR, the man was working in an 11 month time period. Uh, so that was our, our relationship was pretty much always working and getting stuff done. 
But I remember the most thing that impressed me was if y'all can ever look at the footage where he spoke at the Brotherhood Crusades uh, mm -hmm. event that we had when they were putting up money and fighting against the three strike laws mm -hmm. that eventually happened and, and was defeated in LA. But they were major going against the three strike law in California. Park and Chuck gave a lot of money to the Brotherhood Crusade and a lot of their time and effort trying to trying to beat that proposition mm -hmm. or that law. And uh, the way he talked, he talked on camera, you know, for the media. Mm -hmm. But then there was a bunch of gang members that, that were there and they took in like a back room. Mm -hmm. That's when they were showing us the, uh, cause Shug uh, and Defro had did some like, that's when PlayStation, or not, not PlayStation, Nintendo like, yeah. and stuff was big. Sega and, and, and Nintendo. And they built some like um, houses like little, little like dial houses or something, mm -hmm. but they had PlayStations built inside where they were de delivering to the different hospitals, the children's hospitals and stuff like that for kids to play with, uh, you know, while they're in the hospital yeah. recovering from whatever issues that they had, you know? Right. Cause Sugar was big on the children, mm -hmm. children's hospitals and stuff like that and death row. I remember going to Martin Luther King Hospital, children's hospital, everything around Christmas time giving out toys and stuff to, to the kids' wards. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, uh, so they, they were there uh, showing us doing a walkthrough in there and then it was like an impromptu meeting okay. with a bunch of gang leaders and stuff like that. Yeah. And Pac was just trying to tell them, hey, you know, how we got to learn to police ourselves as far as, you know, when we go to area, doing what the NFL and the NBA doing right now. Mm. Like, if I come to your town and do a, uh, he said, I can't take care. We don't have enough money to take care of the whole United States or, or the world. Mm -hmm. But if I come in your town and do a show, then we need to do stuff in that area, in that community. Mm -hmm. Build, maybe go to a homeless shelter or a woman's abuse because they were big with this. Ah, I forget, it's still big to this day. It was a shelter that they used to do a lot of stuff with. I think it's national wide now. A place called home. Mm. Suge don't. Suge built a place called home <laughs> with the money that they donated back in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. I know it's still going big today. And what I mean by that, he helped them out and donated a lot of money yeah. with them in the beginning. And and the Jim Brown thing. But mainly to go around to the different locations and take care of, of things in that community that's going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to deliver checks to people that y'all wouldn't believe for helping with burials on behalf of Suge and Death Row. Mm -hmm. I remember when he was in prison up in Sacramento where he had heard of um, a playground, you know, they showed on the news. Mm -hmm. And it was a playground that went under and they were about to tear down or need to be redempt. Called me, Rich. Get a check for twenty thousand dollars or twenty five thousand dollars, something like that, and take it to this this place. I don't know nothing. Don't tell them who it's from. Just donate that and tell them to rebuild this. Mm -hmm. It got out. It yeah. got on the news. And yep. Somehow they found out who it was. Probably because it came from Shug Knight or mm -hmm. Death Row. Probably came from Death Row. Knowing my dumb ass. <laughs> uh, and so they knew who it was from. And, yeah. And they got on the news and all of that. But he didn't want no no publicity from it and all of that. And so we did stuff like that. But my point in your question was about Pac. What was impressed me about Pac was mainly, like I said, Holly just talked about doing things in communities when we go there and show up there, then always try to take time to help out with the gangs or talk to them in there about, you know, this crime against brothers killing brothers and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And Pac was big on that. And I told his mother about that when I went and delivered her the, uh, the medallion that we had, that I, mm -hmm. the Machiavelli medallion. Yep. Y'all call it the euthanasia uh, uh, medallion, but I'm going to tell you all as many times as I can, it didn't say euthanasia, it says Machiavelli. Uh, I know y'all argue with me about that, but hopefully John can blow it up and, mm -hmm. and show y'all it's Machiavelli. Yep. Uh, and I, when I delivered that and she... We was telling stories to each other about that. It was at the West, the the W, the W Hotel in um, Westwood. 
And we sat there for about hours talking about that. And I was, you know, and I told her about that story. And she said, Reggie, you know where you get that from? You know, she said, that's the Black Panther way of thinking. That's the model that's big from the Black Panther. That's his training, Reggie. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I remember most about Pop. Gotcha. And my okay. interactions with Pop. Okay. Here's an interesting question. Um, all the time that you worked for, or, or all the time that you spent working at Death Row, is there anything that you had access to that you wish you would have kept? Whether it's uh, photo albums or, you know, music, or, you know, looking back now that you wish, damn, I wish I would have taken that or kept it or whatever. Not stole, but my you money. know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my money. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know. This thing was riding around in a, a V6. Cost of $2,900 a month lease. Mm. Stupid shit. I had a house in the Marina del Rey, one in Corona, one in Ladera. <laughs> Stupid shit, man. Stupid shit. Stupid shit. Look, the building. Mm -hmm. The building, I just saw about two or three years ago, a building that I bought, Suge bought for $1.5 or something million dollars from, um, from um, Chuck Norris. Mm -hmm. It was Chuck Norris production building. He bought it in like 94, 95. I bought from Sugar in 97, 98. That's goddamn mm -hmm. fly. <laughs> uh, 97, 98 um, for three million. Mm -hmm. That motherfucking building I saw sold for like 18, almost 19 million dollars. Damn. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, nah, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about like pictures and stuff like that. I had everything. I had all of those pictures and and and, and 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 all the letters that anyone that wrote you in prison and all of that mm -hmm. but um i didn't have no need for it. thank god i didn't because the feds would have eventually took it all because when they came raiding that's why y'all see i'm always hiding shit like my plaques <laughs> and my 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 jewelry that i had and all of that shit i had i was like these feds ain't coming back to get this shit while i'm on probation mm -hmm. and they just come in your house to take every goddamn thing yeah. yeah, I wouldn't believe some of the stuff that had nothing to do with with nothing. And they took mm. just to mess with me, and so, but now there's no more, and I ain't doing nothing else stupid. Uh, and so, I can break out with stuff, but yeah, but there's stuff that I know his dad has, mm -hmm. and going unfortunately going to come out because his. I don't even think the sisters care, but his nieces, his niece, <laughs> my girl wild thing, uh, I think she got access to because the dad was living with them. I heard he moved back to Mississippi or somewhere, but, and I think she was getting to a lot of that stuff and uh, was leaking it out. But there's a lot of VHS tapes of private parties and, mm. and um, pictures, mm -hmm. explicit pictures and stuff like that that was taken during that time and that I think is going to surface up yeah. if anything ever happened to Shug mm. or, uh, or the dad. Yeah. But mainly, I think she'll even wait until something bad happened to Shug. Yeah. And you were saying and when you handed over the Tupac Masters um, or when you were all going the through them, yeah, yeah all the, the written out lyrics. Yeah, the all lyrics. Th well, you know, that was actually, I think I did the right thing on you that. You did, yeah. Oh, and that was uh, inside of... Uh, all the music box when we was doing the transfer. And, and y'all don't believe me, Reggie's lying, you know, how that certain person like to say I'm lying and I'm lying. But ask Edie. I remember we was in uh, Skip Sailor's studio and Pac, that genius motherfucker, inside of all the 24 inch reels, he had his lyric sheets uh, written out mm -hmm. on paper inside each one of those boxes. And I always wonder what happened to him. And I'm not, and, and I'm not saying Edie kept him. No, I don't believe no. that at all. But I, uh, Edie said, "Hey, Reg, can I take those? Because our intent was to take the reels to give it to Interscope. Right. And Interscope was going to hold everything. That was like the buffer between, you know, the escrow company or whatever. Yeah. For Defro and Amaru or the estate. Mm-hmm. Defro and Pop, you know, which was the estate. 
And um, but I I let E D take those out and said, Hey, just take these and give them to the mom. Yeah. Uh, but I noticed in the exhibit I don't recall seeing any uh the no, sheets. They, they had some. They did have some. Yeah, but not a lot of the death row stuff. It focused more on the track list. It had all this track list that he yeah. had mocked up or planned out and stuff like that. But yeah, not not a lot of those. Although he had every song that he wrote on, mm -hmm. on, on, on pieces of paper, wrote out. Yeah, yeah. And in the box with the reels of those particular songs. Yeah. When you got those reels to do that with Edie... Um, how did you how did you know that you got all the songs because i always heard that there were reels that were mislabeled or that reggie wright ain't never been to the pacific archives in his okay. life ever so was it butch that went butch. and grabbed that stuff okay okay butch small was in charge of doing that all i was there for was to make sure that Edie would say this song is missing okay i think we did this song yeah where this one at mm-hmm but Edie eventually signed off on everything that we, uh, uh, you know, that we turned over. Right. And was pretty much told, because he was like the representative for the estate. For the estate, yep. And he kind of must have, because they wouldn't have did the deal with us mm -hmm. if they were still felt that it was some You guys were, some yeah, hiding some stuff, yeah. So he had to either tell them, hey, we're missing this song, this song. And they just like, all right, they ever come out, we'll deal with them then. Mm-hmm. It could have been the conversation. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But I don't ever remember Edie saying, where's this song at? You know, where's this particular song at? Because mm -hmm. to be honest, I think nobody knew. Yeah. Everybody was just trying to go off to their brains. Okay. It wasn't like it was written down or anything like that. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what they recalled. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, you recently saw for the first time the Snoop and DMX versus... Um, can you tell me what what you thought about it? What you know? What what you thought? Pissed at all you motherfuckers! All of y'all ain't not one of y'all ever told me about that out there. I just came across that Snoop and DMX versus uh, on coincidence, I'm just surfing on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, but only verses I knew about, and that's when I was in jail. Because y'all got to remember, a nigga been laid up from that COVID in the hospital and all of that shit for over a year. And then uh, prior to that, I was in jail. But we did, was able to see, because I remember watching the the Jeezy and, uh, the Jeezy and, uh, God damn, oh, May, Gucci. Mm. Gucci versus. And I thought that was the best shit ever. Mm-hmm. All the other ones, I watched the one with Herb Gotti and or Little Kim and what was it Fat Joe? Fat Joe, mm. the Fat Joe and Ja Rule. It was okay, but then I ran across that one with Snoop and DMX. Two hours long. I watched every song, every first to verse. Love it. I keep telling y'all. Snoop might give y'all boy Pac a run for his money on a versus. We might have to do that one day. We got to figure out how we can play music on, on YouTube without getting in trouble. Mm. But I'm telling y'all, <laughs> much as shit as I talk about Snoop, and I'm not, I talk shit about Snoop because I'm just trying to set the record straight. Not mm -hmm. that I have a dislike for Snoop. Other than he's trying to rewrite history. But... That nigga as an entertainer, as his stage presence. Y'all look at how Snoop's stage presence was. And he was in better shape. And we all know DMX obviously was going through some health issues or something mm -hmm. at that time. Because I think he did uh, go on to our, to our maker uh, a few months after that. That particular verses or maybe a year or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, man... Just the way Snoop presence was on that versus the way he carried the stage and kept the crowd and kept you entertained. Impressive. Mm -hmm. And the songs, the music was impressive. So yeah, I'm mad none of y'all told me to ever go check <laughs> that out. And uh, Yeah, I just wanted to shout that out. I, I thought that was a great versus. I would love to see a Dre and 
Teddy Raleigh maybe versus or just those songs that they pr- produce. Mm. I think that'll be a good one, Dre, Dr. Dre. Yeah. Not just on their songs, on songs that they produce. For other artists. Those niggas got, especially Teddy Raleigh. Y'all wouldn't believe this catalog. But Teddy Raleigh and uh, Dr. Dre uh, versus, I think, would be good. Mm-hmm. Or maybe a s- Swiss Beats for for those on the East Coast that like, you know, even though Teddy Raleigh is from well, Virginia. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you this. We talk a lot about Snoop in a negative way. Um, not in a negative way. We just correct some of the stuff that he uh, misleads people on sometimes. But let me ask this. Um, deep down, do you hope that he succeeds with Death Row? Oh, definitely. And if, and, and, and the second part question is, if for whatever reason he were to reach out and say, I need you to help with this, would you do it? Well, depending on what, but he would never do that, number right. one. Yeah. Um, but, but overall, do you hope yeah, that... Yeah, I have an interest over there that I'm going to get done. I just got to get off my ass and get it done right. Mm-hmm. But y'all believe, y'all can listen to that person over there talking about, I'm lying and I'm this. Trust me, Reggie got contracts on buyouts with all those motherfuckers under Big Simon Says. The company that he's misleading y'all on was created in 2016, 2017. Reggie did all this shit in 2001. Mm-hmm. So how can you be stealing something or, or, or lying about something that's somebody going to go fill out and do paperwork on in 2016, 2017 when you did it way back in 2001? Mm-hmm. I've been talking to y'all about it since 2013, 2014. Yep. But it's another story. We we'll deal with that. I ain't got no reason to debate that with, with an idiot. Uh, so yeah, Snoop's success is a Reggie gonna be a Reggie payday. That's my retirement money sitting over there. Mm-hmm. Even if I do decide, some be like, "Oh, nigga, you ain't did that without Shug." Okay, me and Shug know what our deals are. Who have we got worked out? I I called going off on his people after that, saying, "What the fuck." I said, Reggie, what are you talking about? That was that crooked ass attorney and him did that. Okay, whatever. I don't believe that, but that's what their story is. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll let it ride. But they say, but Reggie, if you can get it, get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Make sure it happens. So yeah, his success is, is nothing but eventually a success for me. So, How do you feel with what he's done so far? as far as trying to soften the name of death row and not in a negative way, but trying to make it more pop culture or more acceptable in today's kind of, uh, for the youth. And, you know, I see more people wearing death row shirts now and merchandising you know, is great. Yeah. Oh, he's doing a great job of merchandising. You don't make no money off of have much money off of t-shirts. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. <laughs> we know so a lot of death row use t-shirts, but we ain't rich off of that. Right. Um, he got the name. He got us talking about Death Row again. Yeah. So he's doing a great job of, uh, as far as that, being a front man. Um, you know, getting the name out there. I'm sure that's all he promised them. Mm-hmm. I, 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 A Dr. Dre and Snoop album, I, I like to see. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I had to bite my words a little bit about the 50-year-old rappers and stuff. Because I saw a song recently. Mm-hmm. That I kind of liked. Okay. <laughs> that was done by about four 50 year old motherfuckers. <laughs> Too short, Ice Cube, E40, and Snoop. Don't know the name of it. That's how much it held my attention. <laughs> but I liked it. Yeah. When I said, I don't want, ever want to hear a song by no bunch of 50 year old men. Mm-hmm. Those four are all over 50. And I like that song. I could see myself bumping that song. But the whole album. I don't see it. I still think it's a young man game. When you're trying to establish new artists. Mm-hmm. Those is already established, okay. I'm kind of wanting to see what, what Dre and, uh, and uh, Snoop can do. Based on their track record, I don't think the last hit that was done on Snoop was done by Pharrell, mm-hmm. if I'm being honest. Yeah. Um, two last two 
Drop it like it's hot and beautiful. Um, but yeah. Um, do you think he'll ever do anything with the old catalog? With his no, old music? No, he gonna put stuff? it back up. He's going to put it back up on some type of streaming. But what about like the unreleased, <laughs> like let's say Snoop and Tupac songs? You think he'll ever try yeah, to get it up? like they did with that song where you got Tupac jumping over the tennis court, net looking weird. They do little stuff like that. But think about it. Are y'all really feeling that? I know a few of y'all going to say, oh, that's the best song ever. <laughs> but when we're talking about, because I can tell you some songs off of Chronic 2000 that I was a part of, that y'all think was the best song ever. Everybody has a favorite song because it appeals to you. But I'm talking about when you need a massive of people mm -hmm. to approve it. Let's get to that massive. I bet you I can't get 75% of y'all. The song I just mentioned say that y'all like. By 40, Short, and uh, Snoop, and, uh, and Q. And most of y'all gonna be like, oh, Reggie, you crazy. That song is booty. That's that. <laughs> so, you know, you know, they can do stuff. I, I, I watched something with Puffy and his little new girlfriend, this little toy of the week, uh, where they were bumping to a, uh, an old... Uh, uh, chronic beat riding down uh, in New York uh, in a drop top and I was like okay that's cool that's samples but you don't make no money off that mm -hmm. <laughs> whoever owned that then Dre didn't own that beat there's another dude that uh, I had to get licensed and when I did the relative albums because I used that beat mm. it's an old man um, from LA damn I wish I had Big Y Big Y know his name he actually the one that actually owned that song. Okay. And that beat. But I had to give him $5,000 to use it for the relatives. Mm. So, you know, just because y'all hear a song and it's nice, but once you hear that sample in it, money's out the window. <laughs> you don't make no money. You're just doing that for publicity. So. Okay. Tell me songs without samples in it that y'all like on the old motherfuckers. Okay, last one is, um, what would you say are the negative things that came with working at death row or being in the, in the position you were in when Shug was locked up? You know, we always talk about the good things and, you know, a lot of the, the work that you did. What would you say were some of the negative um, aspects of? Yeah, the, the, the childhood time I lost with my kids. Mm. I have two daughters. I have a daughter that's 30, 34. She's born in 88, so whatever that will make mm -hmm. her. She just had a birthday last week, October 24, 1988. Her name was Brittany. When I was a cop, I used to take her in my police car, go pick her up at Optima School, and, and drop her off on my grandma's house on Harris, who was babysitting her. Mm -hmm. Every day. Make sure. It was with Brittany every day. But then once she got that the tender age of 13, 14, I went around like I should have been. She's been wilding out ever since. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In my mind, mm -hmm. good girl, smart as hell. Gave me five beautiful grandkids. That's why I think she got some Mexican in her. Because keep that, no, no disrespect to the Mexican. <laughs> I always ask you, oh, are you black or you got some Mexican in here having all these kids? Like folks don't have all these goddamn kids. What's wrong with you? But I forgive my grandmama blood center. Mm -hmm. Cause my grandmama had 17. Yeah, your dad <laughs> so, was in, yep. Yeah, so. Actually she had six, she lost one. We, we lost uh, London, my oldest granddaughter. But anyway, uh, things like that, mm -hmm. the family time, uh, not saving my money. Mm -hmm. uh, I made a lot of money back then and uh, were there any deals or anything that you feel like because of Death Row's image, people were like, they weren't willing to... Oh, I to lost all type of... My album with the relatives. Mm -hmm. Went up there and met with Kevin Black, who was running Interscope. Okay. At the time, doing all the promotions. He had Bubba Sparks. You know, he the guy that had corrupt when he was at AM. A&M. a and &M. A &M. Yep. yep. He went, eventually went to Warner Brothers with Tom Wally and had E-40 and... 
and little little John and all of that later mm -hmm. when I did read back hook up with him. But Kevin Black was gonna have his street team. If anybody that works street team know anything about street team, y'all know Kevin Black. Mm -hmm. And uh, he the guy that was in Bubble Sparks that had the big fat stomach and they rode on it. He lost a lot of weight. But he had Brian McKnight and him eventually. I mean, Kevin Black got a big name in this game. Mm -hmm. And somehow I had him convinced and got permission from Jimmy where they were going. Even though I was done with an independent company, Breakaway, they were going to work. I was going to pay him some money to work the album mm -hmm. over at Interscope for me on the side. Mm -hmm. That's when me and Suge now, he jealous. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm all, my whole thing was, nigga, you only blew up Crips. Nigga, I'm blowing up some Pyrus, some Bloods. And nigga, you know, you ain't never, you always hated on the on the red car. Mm -hmm. The red's gonna fuck with the red car, with the, with the relatives and be brazy in there. Mm -hmm. So word got to him that I'm up there meeting with him. Mm -hmm. Him and his little crew come running up there. Sugging right? them? Sugging them. Okay. So I'm like, yeah, what's up, you know? So you know, I ain't never in life been scared of Shug, you know, that's my boy. I wouldn't fear that nigga for nothing in the world. So they all scared. Mm -hmm. like, they locked down the whole Interscope building. Y'all don't believe me? Ask Big Y. Big Y is on, so Big Y and Sugar Booger was up there with me. They locked down the whole, Jimmy called and said, nobody leave the building, everybody stay, because I'm leaving. And now, you know, Shug's up there and I'm like, Shug, what you coming up here tripping? You know, trying to smash all my shit. No, Red, I ain't doing that. I was just over with, no, nigga. They done already told me. You know, they, 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 then they kicked me out of the building, rushed me out of the building because they hear you down there and all of that. Nigga, you hating and all of that. No, Red, it ain't like that. It ain't like that. But my point is, you know, messing up relationships and, and I have a, keeping relationships like that going. Now me and Kevin Black eventually messed up when I had and was working with True Dad Entertainment. Mm. And he was over there doing stuff with Warner Brothers. Okay. And um, we were going to do some stuff. I had Brian McKnight, who he was promoting in. I had did a big boxing thing because I was also doing some promoting with this boxing thing with uh, with Goose and Tudor. Mm -hmm. With this dude that I was talking with, like I said, True Dad Entertainment. With this dude, I said, Rando. Yep. And we had a big old, we sponsored this big old party at the uh, Playboy Mansion. Mm -hmm. And had a big old boxing ring and all that set up there. Yeah. Off the hook, which I had pictures and stuff of shit like that. Mm -hmm. YouTube was around then. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so Brown Brick Night came and sung the national anthem at the boxing match. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. I wished I would have treasured and took pictures and stuff like that mm -hmm. um but the bad thing is to get to your, your 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 question was the relationships that was lost because dj quick prime example the relatives want to fuck with him bad mm -hmm. so bad and i was like i told him you know mugsy my boy bob Gotti have a close relationship with tell that nigga <coughs> you know i don't fuck with suge no more I can't trust that shit. <laughs> I ain't fucking with shit. I can't fuck with Red. Because those niggas is too tight. Mm -hmm. They're going to eventually start back fucking with each other, which is right. <laughs> but I can't, because like a year or two later, I did start back fucking with shit. Yeah. But he was like, I can't trust that. I ain't fucking with shit, so I can't fuck with Red. Don't, trust me, those niggas are not, not at war with each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which quick was, he hit it on the money. And, and, you know, so relationships like that. I told y'all the album that I put out with the relatives, if y'all look at it, it was called Snoop Dogg Presents the Relatives. Mm -hmm. Snoop was fucking with me. Had a hundred G's for him. A hundred G's just to use his name. Yeah. Snoop, I need a verse. I had to buy a verse for Snoop to put on that album from my boy Ed Wiggins from the Bay mm. that he had. And Snoop wouldn't give me shit. Yeah. And I couldn't market it and promote it like I wanted to. And so, just little stuff like that. Gotcha. Is what, um, because I, I had fucked with so many people. When well, I'm talking about from the Rough Riders, so I'm the one that got Herb and Sugar cool. Mm -hmm. I kept the relationship with Tretch. Mm -hmm. Jay Z. Uh, 
uh, Jay Z and Nas. Jay Z, yeah. not Nas. I never really had a relationship okay. with Nas. Uh, but who else I had on it? The Locks. Mm -hmm. I had all those people that's on No Chronic 2000 ones. Scarface. Yeah, it was because of Death Row. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. Right. But I was the one that called and went and facilitated with him. E40. I had a great relationship with E40. When it got him, got him to do a song with Little Bob Gotti. Mm. When we met with him and up in the bay and went out there and got him to do a song with Little Bob Gotti. Now Gotti and B40 eventually have a great relationship now, but you know, stuff like that is what I hate that I, 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 I eventually didn't cultivate or keep. But then I just got away from it. Gotcha. That's the way I let niggas on YouTube, like Frank and all of them. And Michael mm -hmm. say stuff and didn't do anything. Yeah. Didn't care. Yeah. When you're making money, you don't care. Yeah. <laughs> when, and now social media is where it's at. You start caring. Okay. Anything before we wrap that you want to speak on that you can think of? Else.